You were impaled. You were stranded, left alone by your crewmates in Mars. Alone! Did I mention alone? With no form of communication. You have to survive. You have to. You can't run out of food or else you die. So what do you do? What do you do? You fight for survival, which is what Mark Watney did in The Martian, this amazing novel by Andy Weir. Because it's so fast paced, it's so full of adventure, and it's so just gripping and like brilliant, a celebration of human ingenuity and the purest example of real science sci-fi for many years, utterly compelling Wall Street Journal. And of course there's blurbs from real life astronauts in here. The author of Ready Player One blurbed it too. The Martian kicked my ass. Relentlessly entertaining and inventive. Yes, this book is so good. I love the writing in this book because it was so relatable. Mark Watney is relatable and he is in a very, very sticky situation since he's left in a whole different strange planet by himself and he has to survive. So I really liked it. I laughed in some parts. I almost like, I had my heart raising in some parts and literally it was like, what is going to happen next? Like, how is he going to get out of this one? He records his progress in like, kind of like a little diary. So yeah, this book was great. I don't want to spoil things. Okay, so if you haven't read it, go away, stop the video and go read it or watch the movie and you can come back and spoil yourself with the details from the book. Okay, I want to start with saying how much I truly deeply admired Mark Watney while reading this book. He does not give up. He is so resilient to all the shit that happens to him, all the shit that gets thrown at him, all the shit that Mars is just trying to kill him basically. There's like, there's all these things going on and he keeps fighting back. I mean, where, where do I even start? Before I get into the stuff that happens and Mark has to overcome in his, you know, battle for survival is that I really enjoyed the point of view situation in the in the novel. Watney does like these log entries of basically his progress and what he's been up to in Mars. And we get his point of view experience from there. And it's like, you know, it's awesome because you get to kind of see, go into his mind where, where his thoughts lead and how he solves his problems and all of that. And I really enjoy that. And then it starts going into like third person point of view. We actually go into like NASA point of view and we see the the scientists and the people that are running this whole thing, the mission and all of that, and how they're reacting to his death. I was surprised at how pleased I was that we did that because if it would have been the whole book, just mark log entry, log entry, now this shit's happening, now I'm gonna do this. Yeah, that's great, but I just loved, it just gives you a more well-rounded experience of the situation that he's in because people are also reacting. This woman who's in charge of like basically observing the images that the satellites around Mars take. So she discovers that he's actually alive. She notices these details and you know these things moved around the hab. Could he be alive? How did this happen? They, they, they're freaking out. Mark has to survive until the next mission is in like two years. He does the math and he does not have enough food packs to survive. He's gonna run out of food. He has a bunch of vitamin pills and minerals and shit, supplements that he can take for him to not be malnourished, but he needs calories. You can't have all the nutrients without the calories because the calories give you energy to keep moving, to, to sleep, to breathe, to do anything. He's trying to figure out how to do this and I love this because I love, you know, the nutritional science behind this. He figures out that he can use the potatoes that they were originally going to use for their Thanksgiving meal, him and his crew. He's going to use those. He starts collecting his shit and he uses it as manure because like the bacteria, like the bacteria will make the soil. 
actually something that will help plants grow and it's just so weird like he recycles everything he creates a little potato farm inside his home and there's a problem if he doesn't have enough water he needs water for his plants we go again back to like the nasa thing and they're like trying to figure out what mark is doing and apparently it turns out he's going to get like this he gets this rtg thing to keep his rover car like thing warm enough so that it doesn't waste energy in the heater system so that he can travel longer distances. I really admire, admire that about our character here because he takes so many risks and he basically sees it as like, okay, well either I'm gonna die risking my life trying to survive and get improve my chances of survival, improve my chances of communicating with Earth. He goes over and he finds Pathfinder that has lost contact with Earth since 1997. No problem, I'll get it and you know, I'll try to fix it. I'm an engineer and I do shit and I can fix anything. The thing that I wanted to talk about is how he deals with the whole being alone in Mars, stranded by himself. He keeps himself sane, like he, he watches a lot of 70s TV shows that hit one of his crew members had in like a digital form. He reads books and all of that and he listens to disco music because that's all he has available to him but you know that doesn't always fill the gaps he's lonely he needs to talk to humans he wants someone to respond to him he just wants to talk to someone yeah he's trying to survive but he's also trying to keep himself human i would probably if i were mark i would have taken a whole bunch of books like a thousand of books just in case you're left in mars like i would probably just take a lot of books a lot of them just in case I were to be stranded there. I won't care if I run out of food, but I wouldn't run out of books. I could just die reading books. He, we, we get back to the part where he has Pathfinder, the little rover and the little like old satellite communication thingy. I don't know what it's called, but he gets it and he fixes it. He succeeds. So he is able to transmit images from where he is onto directly to Earth. So they're trying to figure out a system for them to communicate with him and they they just they have i imagine it like kind of the way i imagine it i imagine like the dalek plunger thingy the plunger thingy you know that moves around like this and it's like a camera it's like the eye and it just imagine like because they start they come up with a system when he writes the letters and the numbers and on the floor with rocks and then the camera just points to whichever one and then so for a whole sentence it takes forever and they just point the i imagine the dalek plunger just pointing to the <laughs> letters another thing that was super crazy and i couldn't believe was the people at nasa haven't told they took forever to tell the crew that he's actually alive like they still believe he died. They still believe that they left a crew member, you know, his body in Mars to decay. They finally supply, like, this little mission for him. So, the whole mission fails. The luck, the whole supply is ruined. It explodes over a city somewhere. It was a failure. Space fail. Mark finally is able to have communication. They establish communication. He has email. He gets emails from his mom and such. And his crewmates he's he's finally in touch with earth so that's good and he feels good about that but then another thing goes like wrong he's going out and in, in and out from this one specific door in the hab and of course you know of course that this is gonna go and rip fall apart and just everything goes to shit like literally he gets blown out of the hab all his potato farm is ruined like it's everywhere it's just ruined he gets knocked out and he's like you know what i'm gonna give up i can't i can't go on he's like are you kidding me really <laughs> so and then he, he has like a moment to calm down and he starts like he he records more logs it's just so sad that his potato farm was ruined he's gonna run out of food so that's the huge issue it comes down to food because i mean I need food in my life. They finally have a plan where they're gonna team up with like this Chinese like space station. They basically are gonna let them borrow their ship to send the supply. And they're not gonna send it to Mars this time. They're gonna actually send it to the crew members in Hermes and they're gonna basically pull it in 
and like connect it to the ship and then go to Mars and pick up Watney and then they're gonna have like the supplies and they're gonna have food for all of them and then come back to Earth. They tell Mark they tell Mark all these things to do. So he's fixing it and of course he's fixing this rover to make this like long extended, you know, travel mission to the to the Ares foresight. Every little mistake goes wrong, you know, our author here keeps throwing shit at him. And of course he loses communication again because he put like a screwdriver in the wrong table and there was like a current, like electricity that blew everything up. And I mean, gladly, he was okay, but now he can't communicate. So he continues making his modifications to the trailer and the rover and he goes off to Aries and it takes days and days and he's he eats his cold potatoes every day. Like, can you imagine eating cold potatoes every day? Like, just potato, like, even just raw potato. He goes through, like, there's, like, the crater, and then he finds, like, there's this, this like, a smaller entrance, like, an entrance to the big crater. So, he, he sees the shorter path, like, the shorter, you know, like, little entrance to it. And, of course, you know, it's, it's, and we get, <sighs> we get this, like, suspenseful, another third person, third person point of view type of thing, where, like, it's describing the, the wind storms and how the dust powdery dust and stones have settled into that like side of the crater like you know that ridge whatever and basically it's not stable and it's like steep like this and he's coming in his rover and it's gonna fall because it's not it's just not gonna support the weight it's not like big stones there it's just powdery stuff and some stones so it's like he goes and he flips over like oh my gosh we knew it was coming too because we were told as an audience we were like okay we know what's gonna happen he survives i don't know how he survives but he survives his rover is flipped to the side and the trailer part is like flipped over completely like a somersault so he flips them over then he fixes everything gladly nothing was too crazy and then I love this because he this is my favorite part. My favorite part of the whole book was the fact that he has these meals like and when he saved like four of them, right? And he labeled them for certain days. Like when I start the mission, when I get there, shouldn't I survive something I shouldn't have. So that's what he labeled it. And he's like, and then I I fixed everything and then I'm off on my mission again to find Aries 4. And then I ate my meal pack because I survived that shit basically. It's like, <laughs> he's like, I deserve, I deserve a meal. I deserve a full meal. Like, I'm not gonna eat three fourths of it. And it's just like, oh my gosh, you deserve so much more. You've survived so much shit. Like, food, yes, get all the food you want. But anyway, I just love that because he did that for himself. Like, he knew, he knew some shit was gonna go wrong. He just knew, cause, come on. The shit going on with the spaceship, like with Hermes and like trying to get the right distance. The launching ship that's gonna launch him out of orbit so they can pick him up. They're like, you're gonna cut off the face, you're gonna tear out all the seats, you know, cause you don't want all this weight. So he does that and then he covers the front with like basically a, like a tarp, like a sheet. And for, like, imagine slicing a van in half and then you cover it with a sheet and duct tape. Basically, that's what he did, and then it launches, and of course it rips, and he's flapping around, he's losing speed, but he makes it out of orbit, so, into orbit or whatever, and yeah, so he's kind of knocked out for a little while, but then of course he's alive, he's good. They finally get to him, after, after still so much suspense, the, the people in Hermes are trying to deal with, like, getting close enough to him, having the right speed, like that part the whole part i was like i couldn't i couldn't stop reading and i couldn't like my heart was racing and i was like he can't i don't i don't think i i was thinking i don't think i will appreciate this book if he or them all end up exploding somewhere or they end up dying or some shit goes wrong and it's like a tragedy like i will not like this book because what's the point it's about survival he has to survive they all have to survive and get back to earth so I was so relieved. I was so relieved when they finally get him. They reel him in. He has a broken rib or whatever and he's all stinky and then showered or cleaned himself in like days, weeks. And then 
they make their mission back to Earth and they survive. I assume they survive and get to Earth. This was my first book review and discussion ever. And I rambled for so long. So if you're still watching, you are the best. If you have read this book, let me know down below what you thought. And if you have not read it, go read it, please. I hope to watch the movie by the end of this year. If my fiance reads the book, we're gonna watch it together. If not, I'll wait until he finally gets to read it and we'll rent it or something. But yeah, so, oh my gosh. My book review and discussion for The Martian by Andy Ware. And that's all I have to say about this book. Okay, goodbye, goodbye.